We haven't let limited sun discourage us from growing tomatoes. In fact, this year we're growing more than ever before by pushing the limits. For example, we're growing large varieties for the first time in several years. We're also growing cherry tomatoes in areas of the garden that get well under six hours of direct sun. And we're growing single stem tomatoes on stakes in a variety of locations all over the garden. Today I'll share our results so far. And just for fun, I'll show you our tallest cherry tomato plant, which as an experiment, I don't plan on topping off just to see how tall it will get before our first frost in mid-October. We stopped growing large tomato varieties years ago because with only six hours of direct sun in the sunniest spots and a relatively short growing season, our large tomatoes didn't always ripen before our first frost in mid-October. But after some coaxing from friends on Facebook, I decided to give them another try, and I'm glad I did. We started Big Rainbow, Cherokee Purple, Duster, and Ace 55 tomatoes in our grow room in early March, about two weeks before we started the rest of our tomatoes. And much to my surprise, all of them except Cherokee Purples have already produced ripe fruit. Let's start with Big Rainbows, which not only ripened early, but have also produced the most ripe fruit, starting in mid-July. Like all of our large varieties, we're growing Big Rainbows in an area that gets only six hours of direct sun, which is the minimum usually recommended for tomatoes. With more sun, they could grow to be two pounds. So by big rainbow standards, ours are pretty small. But after years of only growing cherry tomatoes, we're happy to have tomatoes this size. And we'll definitely grow them again next year. Ace 55s were the first of our larger tomatoes to ripen and are definitely worth trying again next year. This harvest included two Ace 55s. There's one on each side of the orange big rainbow tomato. Our Duster tomato plant started out healthy and strong, and we've harvested a number of ripe, delicious fruit from it. But unfortunately, the plant suddenly died. Though I don't know what caused this to happen, it's so unusual to see in our garden that we probably won't grow Duster tomatoes again next year. The only tomato that hasn't produced ripe fruit yet is our Cherokee Purple. But on the bright side, this plant is very healthy and is producing the largest tomatoes in our garden which should be ready to harvest very soon. Though I'll know for sure after a taste test, I'm inclined to believe that we will be growing Cherokee Purples again next year. The best way to grow a lot of tomatoes in a garden with limited sun is to grow cherry tomatoes and other small varieties. This year we're pushing the limits by growing these tomatoes in areas of the garden that get well under six hours of direct sun. For example, this sweet million cherry tomato plant only gets four to five hours of direct sun but will likely produce higher yields than any other tomato plant in the garden. In the past, I tried not to plant even small varieties in areas with less sun than this, but this year I'm pushing the limits further. Let's take a look at a couple examples. Before this organic sweetie cherry tomato reached its current height of nine feet, it only received two to three hours of direct sun each day. It's shaded on the east by blackberries, on the south by the house, and on the west by trees. Nevertheless, it's growing strong and bearing ripe fruit. Now for the most extreme example, I think you'll be surprised to see where I grew these pink boar tomatoes. Behind the vertical Kushaw squash and scarlet runner beans to the south, along a fence that blocks all sun from the west, we're growing pink boars in a spot that gets only dappled light. The plant is healthy and fairly productive. Though I wouldn't necessarily recommend growing tomatoes in such low light conditions, this extreme example shows how small tomatoes can be grown in gardens with limited direct sun. Now let's look at how we're pushing the limits by growing single stem tomatoes on stakes in a wide variety of locations all over the garden. The plants you see here are single stemmed indeterminate cherry tomatoes that are tied with garden tape to nine foot tall, half inch EMT electrical conduit stakes. Of course, you could use stakes made from other materials like bamboo instead. When I say single stem, that just means that I prune all of the suckers and the leaves below the lowest tomato cluster. This approach reduces the ground space required to grow a tomato plant down to one square foot and maximizes vertical space as the tomatoes grow to the top of the nine foot stakes. With plants that only take up one square foot, I'm able to grow tomatoes in small spaces that wouldn't accommodate an unpruned plant and I get much larger yields as a result. 
finally, I decided not to top off this Sweetie Organic Cherry Tomato plant. I'm curious to see just how tall it will get before our first frost in mid-October. Though it may be impractical for us to grow plants taller than eight or nine feet, this experiment is a good demonstration of the kind of results you can get using only good old-fashioned compost, worm castings, and mulch from free local resources, plus nitrogen-fixing cover crops. The plant is currently 10 and a half feet tall and loaded with tomatoes. It could easily reach 15 feet before our first frost. I hope this video gave you ideas on how you might be able to grow more tomatoes even if your garden gets less than ideal sun. Make sure to reserve the sunniest spots for larger tomato varieties. And if you decide to grow cherry tomatoes in more shaded areas, make sure to take it slow with just a few plants at first and learn from your experience before going all out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on a little land without spending much or working harder than you have to. Good boy. Good boy.